Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday again, and welcome to the Investing Systems Trading Service live show. I'm Bill, and we're going to take a look at the markets today and where we are, and look at some of the, well, we'll look at the open trades. Maybe we'll look at some of the the pending and the closed trades. So, interestingly enough, we have basically completed an entire new cycle in the stock market, <laughs> right? Um, and what I mean by that is, is that, uh, let me zoom into this S&P chart here. You know, back uh, a few weeks ago, maybe even, you know, around here, like the beginning of October, or I'm sorry, the beginning of Nove or November, yeah, no, beginning of October, there we are, yeah, right around, right around this area. You know, the market had a little bit of a sell-off and was kind of squirrely here. But, you know, back around the beginning of October, we basically had, uh, we got down to like, you know, one open trade or whatever. And then as this latest leg of the rally started, we had more and more stocks start triggering in, right? And so, you know, it's bunch of stocks on the pending list and this is sort of how it's been going since the beginning of the year and everything kind of moves in cycles right you get these you get these up and down cycles in the market and the system basically adapts to that and when you get a when you get a, a down move in the market typically the open positions start um, hitting hopefully the the ratcheted up and raised trailing stop and then they start getting closed and closed and closed until there's hardly any open positions, right? And then you get sort of after, you know, after a reasonable pullback, then the stocks start to build up on the pending list. And when the market begins to rally again, you get one of these uh, legs up in the market, then the pending stocks start closing over the trigger price and triggering in and become open trades and then as the market sort of you know goes on its up cycle more and more stocks trigger in and there's a bunch of open trades right and then uh what happens is that when you sort of you know get towards the end of a cycle like we are now now this particular cycle like every quarter you know we have the earnings season and each open trade gets closed ahead of earnings so there's no big surprise big gap we've seen a lot of stocks that release earnings and have humongous gaps so we've talked about that many times but anyway so you know here we are now sort of at the end of we've had this big run up here the market's at all-time highs it's kind of extended and you know now we're down to to just four open trades a part of that is because, like I just mentioned, earnings season, right? And so that's kind of, earnings season's a good sort of cleansing of everything and a good resetting of everything. And so I kind of, I kind of, uh, I like it when earnings season comes around. Now it makes it, you know, it makes it a little bit more difficult as far as, um, you know, as far as like, getting into something and it's releasing earnings soon and so we're only going to hold it for a short amount of time but we haven't had too many issues with it this time around anyway so you know let's look at the overall market here one thing i want to look at here is the rsi on the s p this is rsi is probably the simplest gauge of i'm gonna say it's a good gauge of sentiment right and um and also, you know, when it's when the RSI gets around 70 or over 70, then not always, but then you get sort of um, you get like these little short-term pullbacks, right? And so you can see several times, several times when the RSI you, when you start to poke over 70, then and that doesn't mean that the market can't stay overbought for a period of time, but you guys remember. Um, as long as I've been doing this, which is a long time, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember, you know, I can't remember the last time, like back here in January 2018, the RSI got up to 
it got up to um let's see what what, what was the peak there it's kind of hard to zoom in on but i'm going to say it was like close to close to 90 there you go. it was 86 and a half right that was an anomaly i mean that was that was just uh an incredible sort of anomaly and you can see what happened next right but ever since then you know anytime that the rsi gets over 70 that just means that the market's overbought basically and so interestingly enough we're not quite there yet we're not quite there and there's a potential divergence here that and a lot's going to depend on you know what happens with the rsi here i mean there's what you what you would look for in a potential negative divergence would be this this rsi here was higher than than uh, but the market hasn't we haven't had a pullback yet right so so this thing could keep pushing up i like to look at the rsi as sort of you know a good gauge of sentiment too when you start to, when you start to get you know past 6 i would say past 60 towards 70 then you get a lot of um you start to get in this in this sort of uh conventional wisdom mindset that hey you know this boy this market's really strong there's nothing that can bring it down it's just going to keep going up and that type of thing and then you get around 70 and and uh the sentiment becomes extremely frothy so anyway RSI is something that I keep an eye on. And, you know, the one thing I look at right here is that it's not really pushing extremes. Even though the market is up here at all-time highs, you know, and it feels like it feels like it's getting tired. And it's kind of amazing that there seems to be just a uh, constant bid under the market. But go to my candlestick chart here. And so anyway, seems to be like sort of, um, you know, we had this gap up and typically, let's see, on Monday, that sort of looks like, you know, that looks like potentially a pivot high, right? And that gap still has not been closed yet. And it just, it just seems kind of weird. You know, we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of gap ups, overnight gap ups and, now the market the past few days has gotten kind of dull here trading in a real sort of narrow range and it just sort of you know feels tired and it's kind of looking for a catalyst now today you know we've had already today we've had a bunch of fed speak and um what i have circled on here these three days the feds cut interest rates three times here the last three fed meetings here's what's interesting last night i was i was um I was looking at the S&P chart, and this particular day right here, I was curious what happened that day, right? Because that's, uh, you know, the market had just had a fairly significant sell-off, I believe, from, you know, high to low here was roughly 8, it was like 7.8%, so call it 8%. And so I was curious about what actually turned it around this day right what was you know what was that all about and um lo and behold so i went and searched the news it's easy to do you can search for you can search for like stock market and a certain date and then a bunch of articles come up and um and it was all about it was all about um this particular day and i and i forget exactly what the what the uh, what was said or whatever but all of a sudden, everything turned around because I think it was and an, a jobs number came out that was that was bad. Like some economic data came out that was worse than expected, and all of a sudden, everybody said, "Okay, well, the Fed's going to cut rates, right?" And so that was like one of the the Dow was up like you know two or three hundred points or something, maybe it was more. And uh, and this whole week right here, and then I looked at this day, and so this little rally right here was all about the idea that the Fed was going to cut rates in July, which they did right there, but hopes for a Fed rate cut. So that, that little, um, 
rally there after the sell-off was kicked off by, you know, hopes for a Fed rate cut. And and so obviously, you know, when the Fed starts, Fed starts cutting rates, then, <laughs> you know, that's perceived as being a, a catalyst for the market to go higher. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of funny that, you know, they did cut in July and then they cut again here and then they cut again here. And so, boy, you got three Fed rate cuts there, right? Pretty amazing, quite honestly. And of course, you know the Fed has announced what they what they call not QE, and they've started increasing their balance sheet. And so basically, you know they've they've become extremely accommodative once again. And that was after you know obviously last this time last year, right? From uh, let's see the beginning of the beginning in November last year was like right around here as a matter of fact this is one year ago today where i have my cursor and uh, we had a pretty steep sell-off because the fed hiked rates for the ninth time right there right which caused you know a sell-off and um and the funny thing is i i remember distinctly that goldman sachs and jp morgan said that the fed was going to hike they were going to hike rates four times in 2019 Right. And that was like, you know, that was news that was coming out around here. And so, you know, back then after the ninth rate hike, the Fed was all planning on, you know, continuing to normalize interest rates and reduce their balance sheet. You know, and then this happened. Right. Then there was a 20 percent sell off and right around the bottom there. Everybody was freaking out. Mnuchin was calling the, the banks and the make sure they had liquidity in the plunge protection team and you know right during the holidays last year all hell was breaking loose and they managed to they managed to do something to turn it around right and so you know pretty it's been a pretty amazing year quite honestly you know if you go if you go back about a year and look at this it's been in, incredible that and you know, we got literally a tw that was 20% from high to low and then they turned it right around on Christmas Eve and just off to the races. And so, you know, and so basically like a year-to-date chart. Let's look at that real quick. Year-to-date chart, you know, we had this um, humongous rally into the beginning of the year with just a, you know, barely even a pause there, right? And then, you know, we did get, we had the one, you know, significant sell-off of the year, 8%. And right, you know, sort of what ended it, it it's, um, it, it's interesting how it came right to that support level from that prior low. But what ended it was, you know, Fed rate cut, hope, hopes for a Fed rate cut. And so the Fed delivered and they've cut three times so far this year. And so here we are. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, we've just had this pretty significant rally that finally after all this time, has finally, you know, poked above that trend line right there, which had contained the price action basically since the beginning of 2018, since we had the, you know, since the RSI was pushing 90. I think the RSI did get the 90 on the weekly chart, but anyway, so this, this last little sort of leg has been pretty amazing. And now, you know, now you're kind of getting um, getting to the point now where I think that the sentiment is maybe getting a little extreme. I think that, uh, you know, you're hearing like you hear talk of a melt up. I think Bank of America just changed their <laughs> I read yesterday that the Bank of, Bank of America, interestingly, over the years, over the years, um, I've, I've noticed a couple of times where they raised or lowered their year-end price target. Uh, shortly thereafter, the market reversed, which I think is kind of funny. But, I mean, I've noticed that several times. And so be wary of that. But they did just sort of change their um, – I think they – I don't know if they changed their price target. But all of a sudden, Bank of America says, you know, the market could melt up in the end of the year. I saw something else. Um, Ed Yardini said something about risk of a market melt up. And yes, once you get a rally like this and all of a sudden 
the big firms and the uh, you know the Wall Street pros start talking about a market melt up, then you have to you have to be a little bit a little bit leery, just because um, just because because typically you know after you get a significant market move, then everybody sort of jumps on board to it. So. You know, I'm. I don't. It's hard to tell. Uh, the CNN fear and greed index. That's always fun to look at. That's up at the towards the extreme greed right now. So, sentiment's a little frothy. The RSI's, you know, really close to getting seven up to seventy. And um, you know, in a lot of this, a lot of the the rallies and the strength in the market have been based on from what I read, you know, I, I always go to, I always go to Reuters and look to see why they are talking about, you know, why they explain why the market is rallying or moving. And it's like hopes for a trade deal. I mean, constantly it's constant hopes for a trade deal with China. (laughs) And so anyway, hard to tell what happens. I mean, obviously, Obviously, you know, the way that our system is designed, we're not fighting the trend at all. You know, we're we're with the trend. When the market starts rallying, <coughs> then we're getting a bunch of positions that start opening up. And interestingly enough, you know, if it wasn't for earnings season, like it wasn't for earnings season kicking off here, it would be interesting to see how many of the of the stocks that got closed would still be open. And so that's sort of uh that's sort of Throws a little monkey wrench into everything, but you know this is the way that it works. Like back here on this rally, bunch of stocks triggered in. We had a bunch of open trades. Market starts to roll over, and you know those trailing stops get raised up, and then they get taken out, and and then you go when you get a sell. And this is a pretty quick sell off here. Fed raised rate, or I'm sorry, Fed lowered rates. Then Donald Trump said something. Um, you know, something negative happened with the trade war in China, and I think China devalued their currency or something. That was a, was a three-day sell-off there. That was pretty brutal. But anyhow, um, let's take a look at the open trades right now, just for the fun of it, and see where they are. You'll you'll notice that uh, two of these, actually three of them, got opened mid-month, and then we just had this. WST, which got opened here recently, so, yeah, I mean, we've looked at these, we looked at these all last week, along with some others, this one's kind of interesting, um, it's a pretty volatile stock, when I was updating, I was updating this stop this morning, looking at it, and I was kind of surprised it wasn't a little bit higher, but then I looked at, basically, the volatility the ranges of these bars and my guess you know my guess is that this comes up fairly significantly right but at the same time you know if you look just a few just a few days back here at this low um, it was only you know only a couple of bucks above that and so if we get a little bit more follow through to the upside then my guess is that stop's going to start coming up pretty quick What I didn't mark on here yet was the target, which is just getting hit today. 148. So let me put that on here real quick. It looks like, um, I'll check this in a second. It looks like it might have got tagged the other day. So let's see. What was the the high there? Yeah, 148.11. So intraday, it tagged tagged the target there just barely. But today, it's actually finally pushing through the target. Now this one's only been open for since right since back here where I have this circled, right? So it hasn't really been that long. It's it's uh three so, you know today's like seven days into it. So this is the most recent one. The other ones, the majority of the stocks that got open through the month of October have been closed now. Either either due to earnings or they finally got taken out by the rising trailing stop. So, yeah, this this has some extreme ranges, daily ranges on it, right? I mean, the, 
I, the system calculates like the average daily range over a month's period of time, and it uses that in conjunction with time to uh, figure out where the stop goes. And so you can see some of these days, this thing can easily move, you know, three bucks or more on any given day. And so that's why the this, this stop is still sort of lagging down here. So my guess is today, I mean, it kind of looks like it's taken another leg up here. And so my guess is that, you know, the stop will ratchet up a couple of bucks tonight after we do the update. And so, you know, so far so good. Zoom out on this chart. And if you look at a candlestick chart here, and we did this last week too, we looked at the same thing. So if you look at a candlestick chart and you just kind of use the, the bodies of the candles um, instead of those crazy wicks, right? There was, there was a few like weird days, like weird spike up days. And, um, and it kind of, yeah, it's a beautiful pattern. This, this particular pattern here is uh, very similar to, you know, similar to that pattern right there. Same sort of thing. You know, stock in a, in a nice primary uptrend, goes into pullback mode, and then reverses, moves higher, right? So, interestingly enough, uh, earn, there's, earnings are already through on this. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, earnings were this day, right? Where there was this, this big, huge, long-range day here. You had a gap up, and then it sold down or whatever. That was earnings, and so it triggered basically right after earnings and uh, so far so good so that's looking pretty good I'm gonna delete that off there because it kind of clutters up my chart and so let's see going down the list here the next one is this GMS which what's interesting about this one too this is um, first I thought this was an anomaly but it's not really is that the stop on this, the trailing stop, which was at 29, like like right back here, right, is still at 29. And it's kind of un, it's kind of unusual because I don't really recall a whole lot of stocks that where the stop doesn't you know ratchet up, <laughs> right? I mean, typically it does, and you know, and it could potentially ratchet up tonight, but this 29 stop got generated probably uh, and it's and it's hard to tell like exactly which I'd have to go back in the system but it doesn't really matter but it probably got generated after like this little sort of dip right here but so far so good and as of right now it's still sitting at 29 I probably shouldn't have extended it so far because there's a good chance there's a good chance that it'll ratchet up tonight because yesterday we did have, you know, we did a little bit of a, a higher high, but it's coming in, so it may come up a little bit. Um, you know, real, all it would take is like one more push higher, then it would start to come up towards probably towards 30 or whatever. But as of right now, it's still, um, you know, it's still just kind of hanging in there, and and that's a good spot, right? Because this was the last. This was the last sort of couple of lows there, and it's just below that. So, so let's see, GMS, uh, no earnings. Earnings are over with, I guess, and uh, because I'm not showing any earnings that are pending. Next down the list is JEC, and let's see, JEC does have earnings coming out on. 11:25 before the market opens. So that's still a ways away. That's still a couple of weeks. So this this has still got a couple of weeks left in it. You can see that uh, rallied up. Here was the trigger back here. I usually start the I start the target line around when it triggered in. So that would be would be right about whoops right about there. And so so far so good. This is, we talked about this last week, this is pretty amazing because I had a really nice run in this stock, you know, back from August into September. Pull back for a few weeks, triggered right back in. And so, I mean, zoom out on that chart. This is a, this is a pretty good looking stock here. So, now of course, you know, I look at, I look at yesterday and I'm like, well, you know, you just had this big run up here and 
what sort of looks like a pivot high yesterday. So, yeah, interestingly enough, this stop right here, if you look in the system, the T-stop is still at 92.80. And so... And so that's another one that, that is probably, you know, a day away from, you know, the interesting thing about this, it doesn't really matter that the current trailing stop is way down here because we know it's going to continue to ratchet up like it has been. And, you know, there's usually a little bit of a time lag, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's extremely, it's almost, you know, unlikely that it's going to come down and like hit that right so if it were to fall a couple of bucks here that stop is still going to come up but in a case like this you know when it gets kind of extended um past the target once once the stock gets past the target substantially like this i would not let it come back below the target so let's see earnings for JEC are going to be on 1125 before the market opens that's still a long ways off so no rush on that one uh, looking pretty good everything about it sometimes you get sometimes you get what looks like a little bit of a of a topping pattern kind of like back over here right this particular day it had run up and then you had like sort of a sort of a spike high reversal bar right and then you know this and so you could back here you could have looked at this and said boy this thing looks like it's done it looks like it's about this run has come to an end it's about to roll over and then lo and behold you know <laughs> it takes off and does the same thing so it's a pretty pretty extraordinary stock actually and so so far so good um this one's been open for, you know, quite a bit of time here. Made it well past the target. And then last but not least of the four open trades is CZZ. I don't know why my chart is doing that. Let's try that again. Been noticing that uh been noticing that these stock charts are getting a little flaky sometimes these days. I was just I had I had some trouble with it um yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And uh same thing happened. I mean it just basically it just basically sort of died right in the middle of me going through a bunch of charts. And so let's try that again. Huh. Well that's not good. Oh well we can move on. Anyway, CZZ's trading at 1738 right now and pretty nice actually it's a pretty nice um pretty nice little move there. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. Somebody texted me something. My neighbor texted me something important. Yeah, so here we are. This sucker's up, uh, you know, 15% past the trigger price. And it's basic, basically like right now, it's, you know, it's up a couple of pennies from last night's close. And so, so far, so good. And uh, trailing stop. Trailing stop well above the target. Oh boy, that an, that annoys me when uh there we go. When I can't look at the chart, it doesn't like this symbol. Oh, huh, that's weird. <laughs> that that is um huh, that's odd. So the charts are working. I've noticed that every now and then, so check it out. IWM, the Russell two thousand. Look at this. This was this was the all time high in the Russell two thousand way back there like a year ago. <laughs> right? Actually a little over a year ago. September of last year, big sell off, rebound, and just chopping around in the range. All right, and now it's at the upper end of the range and kind of looking a little bit, you know, kind of looking a little bit dicey here. All right, I mean, when you get these zigzag patterns, right, and this, these are 
pretty significant zigzags. And so, you know, you get a big zig like this, and, and it sort of looks like it's kind of stalling out here. The, the whole market, to me, feels like, it feels like it's stalling out. You know, it needs a, it's sort of, it's sort of at a point where I think that there's some buyer exhaustion, like the buyers are exhausted, right? Like nobody wants to, people that have been in the market and, you know, and, and that, uh, of course, you know, there's buy and holders, but the bid, the bid in the market is share buybacks primarily. And, you know, and the money that's, the money that gets allocated to like 401ks, right? And there's there's just a constant, there's a constant inflow of money that comes in the market from people that are working and they have 401ks and with the company match and every couple of weeks um, that money builds up and then it just goes into the market, right? With With absolutely no regards for fundamentals or valuations or any of that it just you know just automatically goes in the market and then of course you know you have like this year's on track to be to one of the biggest share buyback years uh of all speaking of share buybacks the financials the xlf um all these big money center banks that comprise the xlf are they're huge share buybacks going on at you know J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs and all the big, all the big banks, City. I mean, they're just constantly buying back their shares. Interestingly enough, there you go. XLF. It's been sort of a wild, been sort of a wild ride, right? And um, but there's the high, right? Let me go to a weekly chart, and uh, yeah. So you know, there's there's the all-time high. This is actually kind of a pretty bullish-looking pattern be honest with you right it's like a and this is a weekly chart this is a big gigantic sort of inverse head and shoulders pattern and you know the funny thing is, is that at the beginning of 2018 it's right at the beginning of the year the end of 2017 beginning of 2018 the financials were like the favorite sector amongst all the wall street professionals never forget it i mean it's all you heard about you know, when they were making predictions about 2018, the Barron's Roundtable in particular, you know, had they had uh, 12 of the the most influential analysts on Wall Street, and 10 out of the 12 picked the financials as their, as their number one favorite sector for 2018. And, uh, and what really happened was they ended up, you know, <laughs> they ended up down fairly substantially and so totally blew that which is kind of funny but you know ever since ever since the the bottom there these things have in 2019 they've rallied substantially and quite frankly you know interest rates interest rates you know are kind of um on the upswing here recently and so everybody knows that that uh, well, the common perception is that rising rates are good for the financials, and so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. This uh, it's starting to break above like all this this sort of resistance zone that goes. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's that's kind of the resistance zone, like just below these prior highs, and uh, it's a pretty good looking pattern. You know, big run up consolidation for two years and starting to come out of that. It's kind of like gold. Gold is um, gold is incredible because you almost have, you have to go to a monthly chart to get the real sort of feel for gold. Humongous run up, we all remember that, and then and then like five years of consolidation, and then breaking above like that. And right now, you know, right now it's kind of like forming like a little. And this is a monthly chart, and I got it on log. It's forming like a little um, sort of a flag. Little flag on this monthly chart here, like a pennant maybe. And um, it's, a, it's a pretty good-looking pattern right there. Pretty good-looking pattern. This The break above this zone right here was was the real key. 
And so you look at this log scale here. So, I mean, it won't take much. <coughs> it won't take much to, to send gold to new highs. So. Anyhow, um, yeah, there you can see. <coughs> you can see it's a little bit weak here on a daily chart, but bigger scheme of things looks pretty good. Anyhow, so, you know, I wanted to look at, I wanted to go back and check out some of these closed trades here real quick. Just waiting for the uh, closed trades to come up. And interestingly enough, this is what's kind of, there we go. Maybe my computer's just acting a little weird today. But um, interestingly enough, I go back to... There we go. That's the beginning of... Oh, I want to make sure I get that top part of my screen. There we go. So basically, there's your month of October, right? This was this was these couple here were the first ones that triggered in at the beginning of October. And you know, it's, uh, I know it's a lot to look at, but here's what I focus on is I focus on first of all the target, right? <clears throat> the target and the max price. And so here's the interesting thing is is um I'll start down here at the bottom. So here's the target and then the max price is how high did how high did the stock manage to to go? Oh, you can't see that on the screen. Let me let me do this one instead then. This one's on the screen here. Um <clears throat> so there's the target and there's the max price, right? Those two those two columns that are kind of uh kind of separated there but for a reason I mean everything's sort of got a particular order but anyway long story short this is the highest price that the stock went after it triggered in and what I like to look at is did it hit the target and so like so like this one right here that is higher than the target so that hit the target that one Rambus didn't quite make it to the target right and so as you look up here, that one hit the target. Max price, or I'm sorry, no, it didn't hit the target. That one didn't hit the target. Even, the, even though, I mean, it, it ended up getting stopped out for a small gain. And so I mean, you go down the list there. And so these, ro these rows change color when I mouse over them. But if the max price is higher than the target, which the majority of these are, then... You know, a couple of them, like this one, this GNRC, substantially, substantially higher than the target. That's what I like to focus on, right? Because, you know, some of the, uh, you know, whether it, and here's, an, there's an interesting one on here. And let's see which, which one it was. I saw one, I saw one on here that, uh, oh, this is it right here. This um, Miller Herman. So this one, this one is showing like by the it came, it hit the target, right? So there was the high price, forty-seven thirty-four, and the target was forty-seven thirty, and so it managed to tag the target, just barely, you know, four cents. But it managed to tag the target, but then it came back down and it hit the trailing stop at forty-five thirty, which was below the trigger price, and so and so it's actually showing like, you know, it's showing gray there like it was a loss, even though it hit the target. So that's sort of uh that's something to keep in mind because as you know, the trades open trades only get closed when they hit the T stop. And so that's what that's what this minimum column represents. It represents um where the trailing stop finally got tagged and and or um, where the stock got closed for earnings, right? And so if a stock gets closed for earnings, we use the opening price on the day that if they're going to release after the bell, we use the open price that morning. And that's what the T-stop is for anything that gets closed on earnings. And um, and so that's what the, the min column represents here is... <clears throat> is where what's the percentage 
of the trailing stop, the T stop, as compared to the trigger price, right? And so that's kind of like that's the minimum. If all you did was enter at the trigger price, follow the trailing stop until it got closed without you know regards for the target or anything like that, and uh, and the max price is you know the max distance that it moved, and so you guys know there you know there's parabolic stops that that kick in that. The parabolic stops aren't reflected anywhere on this table. So, I mean, we tried to, it, do, it doesn't look that simple, but we tried to keep it as simple as possible. So, there it is. So, anyway, there you go. You know, there's there's the whole month of October. And um, pretty well, pretty well. I would say that it turned out pretty good. Um, You, you know, minimum percentages are fairly significant. The stopouts were insignificant fairly insignificant now there was you know the biggest one was that i can't get it on the screen there i can't i can't get it on the screen and also have the top column but that very first one right there that was really um this was really the only significant stop out the rest were very nominal and um and so you know and we had some we had some pretty good um some pretty good moves there right even the minimum move, pretty substantial. So let's look at, uh, I wanted to look at uh, the GNRC, which turned out to be the the biggest gainer. Yeah, this, this got closed, this got closed ahead of earnings right here using that open price. And then look, look what happened when the earnings came out. <clears throat> pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Huge earnings pop. And then, of course, you know, it's, uh, it's very typical after earnings come out you get some sort of a weird move like that so anyhow um that's kind of interesting let's see are there any other let me look at it on my other screen see if there's any other notable ones lulu oh, there we go yeah lulu was one where um i believe i believe it got closed ahead of earnings also Let's see, what was the, the close date was 11 one no, I'm sorry. Um, Lulu, Lulu tagged, finally tagged that stop there. There you go. So, there was, um, which, which one was it? There was another one on here. Maybe it was, maybe it was this one. Yeah, this APO. This, this is the one I was thinking about. This APO got closed ahead of earnings. And I mean, literally, like, this day right here um and it was sitting right at the target so we used the, that open price that particular day that i have circled and then um yeah earnings came out huge pop there so it's kind of weird it's kind of weird because the earnings came out and it gapped down the following day and then had a pretty nice pretty nice little rally there to new highs so it is what it is, but I do not suggest holding over earnings. I really don't, <laughs> to be honest with you. And the reason is, is that the reason is that we've seen lots of companies here recently that that have um, you know, really gotten hit when they come out with earnings. Not a whole lot of not a whole lot of pending trades right now. So now I'm looking at I'm looking at the pending trades and this RNG is on the on the pending trades list nike nike on the pending trades list here the trigger right now on nike is at 9060 remember we looked at this last week and that was the trigger price sort of above you know this price action and so now that triggers come down a little bit um 9060 interestingly enough and so today um you know the high is 90.72, and this is sort of this is a, a good example of. Let me see if I can get that little right on 90.60. This is actually a great example of why we use the closing price to trigger in instead of just instead of just buying it at the trigger, right? Because check it out. If you were if you were looking at the pending trades and you're like, oh, okay, I'm looking at the trigger price on Nike is 90.60. Well, guess what? You know this morning. You could have bought it at ninety sixty, and then look what it's doing here today, and and so that's um 
that's a, a really you know really good example of why we wait for a close above the trigger price and so and so i mean even if you know so say it would have opened there today and then ended up closing at you know 9150 or whatever um you know yeah maybe then you you know you'd have to you'd have to buy in a little bit higher than the trigger price but this is exactly why we don't just we don't just get in at the trigger because it's kind of uh using the closing price if i change this to a line chart just for the fun of it and you know you see you do see a lot of people that um <laughs> you see a lot of like on tv especially in a lot of charts where they use these line charts because the in, it eliminates the intraday noise i mean you're looking at the closing prices right here and so you can see that you can see that you know buying up here at 9060 wouldn't wouldn't you know look such a like a, such a great idea looking at the line chart here so kind of interesting cuz it eliminates the noise and you know the pros uh there's an old saying on Wall Street about about you know it's the close the close is what matters not the in, not the intraday you know, noise or the intraday, it's the close. And so, uh, pretty interesting how this thing, you know, it has a, it has a habit. Look at like, look at the last five days in a row. It has a habit of opening around the same, same level here, or at least it did prior to today, and then having a down close, a down day. <coughs> and that just kind of, that kind of tells me that, <clears throat> that um you know it's sort of under distribution a little bit <laughs> right i mean that's what it looks like to me is uh every day this thing and it, it's been sort of under distribution for a while and so it's, there's some support down here there's a little bit a little bit of a gap left there's actually a pretty big support zone but it doesn't i mean it doesn't look all that great until it manages to sort of make that turn like it wants to go higher yeah, check it out. I mean, there's a, this is like a huge zone of support just below, and that does, of course, that doesn't mean that it's gonna hold it, but <clears throat> you know, here's the thing: is like, if Nike's gonna like make a turn, if it's and what you know, what we'd be looking for is you know a move like that, right? Look for it pulls back, bottoms out a little bit, starts to make the turn, and so it's gonna. Once it starts closing over this level here, over this 9060 level, and of course, you know, that um, this can change too, depending on what the price does. I mean, it looks looks to me like, um, looks to me like that range is pretty solid there. So this may not move for a while, but depending on what it does, if it were to drop down here and, um, and like take another leg down and consolidate it may drop off the list right like it it might just barely be hanging on the list here and all it's going to take and it, everything's based on the closing price so it's going to be interesting to see so I, I don't know i mean i have no way of knowing whether it's going to consolidate turn back up or whether this thing's gonna gonna break down here look it looks like um here was one spot where it looked like it had a decent pullback. It was trying to trigger in, and then boom, it just it just fell out, right? So it could be getting ready to do the same thing. So it didn't work that time, <laughs> but it is what it is. I'll take a quick look at uh, one more, this SEDG on the pending list, because I, I remember there's already been a couple of really good trades in this one, right? There was one back in the summer here triggered in hit the target this is a good example of uh triggered in hit the target pretty substantially and then reversed and hit the trailing stop you know just barely around barely above break even but that's one of the reasons why obviously you know the target is there because that's where that's where you want to sell some so half the position then it doesn't matter if it comes back down to the break even stop but and then there was this one over here where it it broke out and uh, same thing ran to the target really quick spent a few days hovering around the target and then faded back in because this is an extremely volatile stock 
it has a lots of um, it has lots of significant moves. But if you think about it, you know, just past couple of weeks, you've gone from 96 to, you know, the range has been from 96 to like 77. So anyway, um, you know, it's another great example of of uh, waiting for a close over the trigger price. The trigger on this is 86.85. So that'll probably come in a little bit. Like like this. Uh, this sell-off is still sort of underway here, and so that's why we don't want to we don't want to get sucked into we don't want to get sucked into just like you know one up one decent up day, and then have the sell-off continue, and so that's why um, that's why that trigger price is still sort of way up here because it's what it's trying to do honestly, and I see this when I look at a lot of these pending trades is. You know, it's it's what it's really trying to do is is allow for the price to sort of settle out, settle out, settle out. You know, find a low and then begin to turn back up out in the future, right? I mean, and so keep that in mind. A lot of times when a stock first comes on the pending list, a lot of times the trigger price will be significantly above where the stock's trading at. And all it's doing is it's saying, okay, you know, now the stock has gone sort of into pull, into a pullback mode. And, you know, we're going to put it on our radar so that after a period of time, once that pullback sort of runs its course and completes, then this stock has potential to, you know, to cycle back up. And so... You know, a lot of times that expectation is sort of out into the future, right? So, anyway, keep that in mind. So, so that's about it, you know. S&P is, um, there's a big battle going on right now. Big battle between the, the, the buyers and the sellers. Like, nobody wants to, nobody really wants to sell because the trend is your friend, right? Market's hitting new highs, going up, you know, seemingly almost every day. Uh, the Fed is extremely accommodative. Earnings season has been, you know, debatable. It's funny because, you know, fact set or whatever, you know. I mean, earnings haven't been all that great, according to fact set, you know, but companies are beating lowered estimates, and so... And so there's a lot there's a lot of spin I I guess you could say on earnings season whether you know whether earnings are good or bad or whatever but but basically um, I mean the actual numbers you know in fact set is who who does the numbers that you can actually trust is that you know this is the fourth quarter in a row of lower earnings for the S and P 500 <laughs> right and uh, which you know kind of flies in the face of everything because you can you can talk about you know global economic slowdown and you know slowdown in the U.S. and all that and I mean the the, the economic numbers have not been all that great right the hard the hard data and so what the sell side analysts like to say you know when the economic data is not that great and by the way you know the Atlanta Fed um, I looked at the GDP, the GDP estimate for the fourth quarter is like barely over 1%. And so if you think about that, I mean, if the economy's growing at barely over 1%, you've sort of got, um, you know, you've got uh, an earnings recession, they call it, you know, shrinking earnings and industrial, you know, industrial stuff is not doing all that great. So all the sell side analysts like to point towards you know corporate earnings because in the in the bigger scheme of things it's corporate earnings that drive the market, and so that's a, a little tough too because corporate earnings are you know it's a fourth quarter in a row of shrinking earnings for the S and P with the S and P up here nosebleed territory at all time highs you know, <laughs> and so you know there's a, so many. Uh, pieces of the puzzle and moving parts to the whole thing but it's just kind of interesting i don't i don't think that a lot of i don't think a lot of people want to sell right now right because they're afraid that and <clears throat> there's so many there's so many moving parts to this like right now we're in the strongest seasonal part of the year right i mean generally from from november to the end of the year you know except for last year but 
is is seasonally um, strongest time of the year. This is when the small caps should start to pick up. It was interesting that Trump tweeted this morning that the markets are at an all time high. All three, all three markets at an all time high, meaning the Dow, the S and P, and the Nasdaq, and um, and so I guess that you know the Russell two thousand. Which is you know just just two thousand stocks doesn't matter, <laughs> right? It's not considered a it's not considered a market. It's uh, kind of humorous because you know Russell's got a ways to go to hit an all time high, and the funny thing is is that we know that it's a narrow market. I mean, I mean literally you know there's like there's like five or six mega cap stocks that are sort of driving this whole thing. I think I looked at. Earlier in the week, I looked at uh, how many S&P stocks were within 10% of their 52-week high, and it was like, you know, just barely half of them. I think that's what it was. Maybe it was not even half of them. And so there's a, there's a lot of stocks that haven't or aren't participating in new all-time highs, right? So it is what it is, but... I, you know, I don't know what to say about a narrow market. It just, you know, kind of this, the whole environment that we're in, I've been doing this a long time, right? I've been through the, I've, I've been through, um, I can't even get it on a, on a weekly chart. What am I looking for? A monthly chart. Yeah. I mean, I was around for this and I was around for this and boy, this sort of, um, this sort of crazy parabolic run up here. This is the longest expansion we're in the longest economic expansion in uh, in history. Like we haven't had a we haven't had a recession since uh, you know we well, haven't had a recession since back here, and longest expansion in history. And the Fed, you know, was bound and determined to keep it going for as long as possible. But at my age, having you know been around a while, I just can't help but think that. It probably is not going to end well, <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to see. But anyway, in the meantime, um, everything's just going along as as normal. And so the thing the thing about these you know these humongous sell offs or whatever is there's usually advance plenty of advance warning. So technically speaking, there's nothing on the chart there that that says that. Uh, that says that you know the market's in any sort of imminent danger, and quite frankly, you know, looking at looking at the the even the weekly chart here, let's look at the weekly chart. You know, there's got you got so there's so much support below. I just you know I get the I get the feeling that even if the market does pull back, everybody's just waiting to buy the dips, right? So it's going to take some sort of substantial catalyst, I think. To, and I mean that doesn't mean we can't sell off, and it's gonna, you know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You get run like this, if the, if the market were to were to sell off below three thousand, you know, or or God forbid, down here around these other lows, twenty eight hundred, you know, according to the financial media, the markets would be in turmoil down here, even after this massive run. <laughs> so, and that's just the way that it works, and so. Any sort of any sort of sell off here is going to is going to be extremely painful. But you kind you kind of you know look at the look at the weekly RSI. This is what I was talking about back here. Um, the weekly RSI got up to ninety and a half back at the beginning of January of twenty eighteen. Like right here, where, right here where this trend line starts. Look at that RSI there. Weekly RSI at 90, you just, you just know that. And this was a parabolic run-up. <clears throat> so interestingly enough, I mean, there's a lot of stocks that have never surpassed this peak right here, right? I mean, that's where, um, well, the Russell, the Russell 2000, let's see, um, it, actually, it actually did manage to make a higher high, but look at the RSI on the Russell. Never did quite make it above 70, so weekly chart of the Russell's kind of interesting. So stuck in this big range right now, pushing up at the top of it. Um, it's got a ways to go. It's got a ways to go before it's going to hit a high. So anyway, it is what it is. I don't think that um, 
what would be interesting, we finally broken above this trend line, right? And so that had acted as resistance since the beginning of 2018, finally poked above it. That could be like what they call an overshoot, right? So if we start to... Uh, if we start to sell off from here, that could have been like a little bit of an overshoot bull trap. Just got to take it day by day here. See what happens. So, Day by day, stock by stock. But the nice thing is that, you know, now that we got all these closed trades under our belt, we got just a, a few open trades that are all doing pretty well. A couple of these are about to get closed for earnings, you know, in a couple of weeks. And so... Um, we may have some stocks trigger in, but right now, my guess is, my guess is that you know the market needs to take a breather, take a pause, maybe sell off a little bit, and then uh, we'll catch the next cycle. So this is this has actually been a really good cycle, and, um, and now that we've kind of reached the end of the cycle, we're just kind of uh, everything's kind of working on a smaller scale. So anyhow, that's what I got for you today. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you here again next week, same place, same time.